Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amun Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to see about string. And string is second important to arrays in terms of lead code. So it is very very important to understand how string works, how to iterate through array and stuff like that. So without wasting a lot of time, uh, we'll go and follow the similar pattern that we followed before. So these are all the different problem statement I would want you to try it out yourself. You can pause the video now, try it out yourself. If you are very comfortable understanding and using all these concepts, we are good. You can even skip to the next video. But let's say if you want to hear some of the intricacies involved in each of these, you could continue watching them. And I want to make sure that uh, we are not wasting a lot of time while me typing a lot of things out. So, so I already typed those things uh, by myself and uh, so we could save some time right so yeah so now first thing is we have something called a string literal in java which is you declare string like this and um, the important advantage of string using string in java is it's it's a uh, default immutable what does mean let's say you want to modify this string and uh, there is no other way you could modify the same reference variable you have to uh, you know you have to point it to a different variable so basically it creates a new object if you try to modify um let's say this one right so any modification that you want to make it's going to give you a new object so um this is for security reasons and stuff like that but let's say for some reasons you want your string to be mutable then you could use string builder um, or the string buffer based upon your needs both looks very similar um, but string builder is a little fast because it's non-thread safe, right? So it's fast, uh, but the string before um, is, is thread safe, so it is a little slow. So very simple to understand where we might use this. You could interchangeably use these in lead code, but there are specific cases where some companies don't ask a typical lead code question, but rather they will ask you to design a log management system using OOPS concept to check your OOPS uh, knowledge. So in those cases, you might want to use string buffer uh, because you want to, you know, uh, publish logs and you also need to make sure that multiple threads can try to log at the same time. Multiple threads can try to um, print the values at the same time. So you need something that is thread safe. So in those cases, you might use string buffer. And apart from that, um, you the string buffer has a lot of cool methods. Uh, buffer and builder both has append where you could append some elements and you could also use insert method uh, but i prefer append you could also pass insert method and the index um uh, so you, so you insert method uh, where you could pass the index where you want to insert and and the um and the value that you want to insert for example you want to insert uh, b so you could do that right so um yeah so now, uh, apart from this, you could use this reverse method uh, to reverse a string. Again, if the original question is to reverse a string, uh, we have to reverse it uh, by using for loop and, and stuff like that. Um, but if if the, if reversing a string is just part of your bigger problem and it's just a sub problem, you could use something like this. Again, how to convert a, a string uh, to string builder or string builder to string? It's it's gonna be very simple. So all you have to do is um you know you could you could let's say you have a string like s when you could, s or s when you could just pass like this and you get a string builder. So similarly, if you want a string um from a string builder, you could pass something like this. So you get a, a string out of it, right? And you could also declare your string using um you know the constructor as well instead of string literal. The only difference is um, this is um, going to create a new instance every time. For example, um, this let's say if you if you create a string s two with the same content, um, all these all these things are in the string console pool in heap memory. So both s one s and s two will point to the same object in the memory. Okay, the reference alone is different. So these are all very intricate things. You might not need to know about all these things, uh, but yeah, I'm just giving you if you are preparing for interview, so it might be helpful. Um, and apart from that, um, let's say it's a very important thing that we want to do, whether we want to use equals equals or the equals method, because Sting is a class in Java that is that is present in uh, java.blank.string, uh, right? So, um, 
so you want to know uh, whether you should use equal to equal to or equals but my preference is i'll always say use equals when you are working with strings right so let's say if you're only working with string literals you could use equal to equal to. but predominantly this is my uh, uh, rule if you are using with primitives or or uh, string literals you can you can use equal to equal to and uh, the equals method for any other classes even string is a class so you always prefer using equals my preference is i always use equals so i don't have to remember when to use what uh, but if you know it very comfortably you are only using string literals then you could use this because the equal to equal to will compare the memory locations okay so if you are using string literals like i mentioned here uh, it's going to point to the same object in the memory so it's going to be true and the equals is going to validate the actual content itself. So it's always going to return you the right answer based on the content, right? Um, who cares about the memory location? We want the content equality. So always prefer equals, right? So similarly, S1 and S2, if you use an equal to equal operator, it's going to give you false because these two things point to different objects in different locations. And you could use equals, then you get the right answer, which actually compares the content of these two. Again, if you want to get the length of the string, you could use method here, right? Very, very cool. Um, in, in arrays, it's going to be a variable, but here it's a method, very important thing to note. Uh, and, and, and if you want to iterate through a string and to print all of its value, you run a for loop starting from zero. Um, the string index also starts from zero and carries towards n minus one so so n being the length of the string so what you can do is you can call the length or you could also store it in a variable like this um yeah, length and then you could you could do s1 dot length and you could pass uh, length here anything about that whatever you feel comfortable let's say you are using this multiple times it's better to declare it once so you can just type the short format and and uh, even if somebody notes right so we can say hey i, I declared a variable um, because i do not want to do this computation again and again right very very simple stuff and and if you want to get a character by character you have to use character at method so the caret method and you pass the index and it's not here it's going to give you back character it's not going to give you back string uh, like like this it's not going to give you back a string like this it's going to give you a character that's why we the method itself is character so if you want to declare it you have to declare it as cat by def if you by mistaking declare it as int it's not going to throw any error but it's going to return you the ascii code of this a which is which is 97 so it's going to return you that so just be cautious and use character here right so And the other way to iterate a, a string is basically to convert into a character array. So the two char array is going to give us back the character array. Um, and uh, and you could you, you you have learned about arrays, right? And how to uh, iterate to uh, them. You you run a for loop, and you could use um, you know the conventional for loop using indexes or the or the uh, customized for loop, which doesn't use index. Whatever you want. And then iterate till zero from zero to the characters dot length. Again, notice here is just not a method here. It's just a variable. And uh, you print out the um, uh, you you access the characters based on the index, uh, or you could use the convent, uh, the customized for loop where you get care on uh, from the char array. Let's say this char array is fast. Um, and then you could you could get similar stuff, right? So you could use any of these for you working, but this is very important method that we might use um, uh, often. And uh, let's say you have a character array and you want to convert back to string, you you should use the new string, and then you could you could basically uh, you know pass the character array to the constructor uh, string constructor. This is very important because otherwise you have to use a string builder um, uh, and then append the characters one by one and then you have to again convert to a string by passing the string builder so which is very complicated rather you could use something like this 
let's say there is a string abc and these are all some of the important methods that you might want to know about it so index of it's going to give you the index of a which is zero if you call b it's going to give you one and uh, and let's say if you are going to call c it's going to give you two and it starts with it's going to check whether this is string is basically starting with the a b if yes it's going to return you true if not it's going to return you false it's very simple contains ends with and let's say there is a substring method uh, which is very important that we might want to use it and uh, the hello substring of one four the important thing to understand here is the start index is inclusive of and the end index is exclusive which means zero one two three so the one two three this this basically in, says you have to print index from one to three right the end index is exclusive so it's printing you ell I mean, if you if you don't remember it, you can always run an uh, S out statement uh, to to quickly validate it before you working out any code, right? Um, again, it is not important for you to pass the end index. You can just mention the start index. It takes till the end of the string and prints you all of that. Let's say there is another method that is widely used that is split. Again, if you have a string like this and you are splitting it based on the space, then you get back string array. These are all very important things. So please make sure uh, you practice this. This is going to not give you list of string. It's going to give you string array. And let's say by, by some reason there are multiple spaces and you want to split them based upon, uh, you want to treat all these spaces as a single space and you want a string array from this, this, this and this containing these elements. Then what you do is you you use a split and then you can um, let's say b dot split and then you can you can pass regular expression that is less. What it indicates is this is I'm splitting this based on regular uh, space one or more occurrences. Again, this slash is for escaping this inside the double quotes. So. If there is one space or more than one space, I want to treat them uh, as a simple stuff. So it's going to give you a string array back. And, and there is something called as replace and replace all methods. Um, so replace is, is similar to replace all. The only difference is replace all. You can pass regular expression. Um, uh, so I always recommend use replace all because you can use it as, uh, you know, you can pass normal space or let's say you want to, replace something like this uh, with something like this right you can also do that and you can also pass as uh, you know the regular expression so it's always recommended to use replace all um, again if you want to just replace one values and you can use replace first um, and and uh, in this we have already seen but let's say you want to join if you have a string array and you want to join them right with with some values Let's say you have I am practicing delete code and split them using string, it, it gonna have the zeroth index as I, first index as am, uh, second index practice, third index as delete code, right? So now you want to join them back using space or you want to join them using hyphen, you could do that using string.join method, right? This is super helpful, otherwise you have to write for int i equal to zero, you have to iterate through the array and add concatenate the the whatever the value that you want to do so this is basically more typing the less typing that you do is better already java is a lot of verbos so so i don't want you to type a lot of things when you can uh, use an inbuilt method like this now um <clears throat> we already seen this but still uh, if there is a string and you want to get a character at an index you, you get the character itself by right, using C. But let's say you declare it as int, you're going to get back the ASCII value of it. It is also important to you know, know about the ASCII ranges of these important stuff. That is A to Z is from 65 to 20, 90. You get some 25 because it's inclusive of 65, right? So, so you have to basically uh, plus 26 characters and then it's inclusive. So, uh, you know, it's going to be 90. And uh, this is from, uh, sorry, 97 to 122. This is for small, uh, the lowercase characters. 
and instead of using ascii values to come uh, to find out the character is is small letter or big letter whether it is a digit it is, is easier to use the um, inbuilt methods coming from character uh, class so this is alphabet and you could pass an alphabet and you get back what you want similarly is digit is uppercase these are all very very simple to use is lower case is also available again another important thing is if you have a string and you want to convert into an integer um you you use integer dot pass int or integer dot value of and pass the string value and you get back the integer similarly if you have an integer and you want to convert it to a string the easier way to do is is append it with an empty string that's very easy right so or you could use string dot value of whatever you feel comfortable i prefer the first approach because it is more intuitive uh, than the other that's all about it guys um you know if there is something else please let let me know in the comments or others also might know about it and practice but if there is something else we'll also go into practice read code so we'll learn that there that's all i hope this video is helpful if you if it is please like share and subscribe thank you guys bye